We are live in five, four, three, two. You know the rest. Let's do it. Yells. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the Creator Town Hall here on Studio Live today. My name is Pete Johns. If it's your first time here on this channel, I try to help you create, record, and release your best music. We do that through tips and tricks and tutorial videos and live streams just like this one. If that's your bag, consider subscribing. Today on the show, we'll be taking a look at 15 mistakes that every home studio makes, at least according to Glenn Fricker over at Spectre Sound Studios. I'm going to talk about why when you're recording with a microphone on an audio interface, does it only go on the left channel and what you can do to fix that. That's going to be an interesting one. And we're going to talk about why it's never a good idea to drop your links when asked to on social media. What am I talking about there? Well, hang around and you'll find out. G'day to the people who are here live. If you do have any live questions, here's all you need to do. Just throw the word question in front of your comment and ask your questions and we'll be able to answer as many of those as we go through the show. And uh, we are brought to you today by the Studio Live Today Gear Guide. So if you are in the market for some new gear, as we say around here, use the gear you have right now to create. Don't go out and buy new gear if you don't need to. But when the time comes, a bit like a funeral service, isn't it? When the time arrives, uh, do head over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. We've got links to Amazon, to eBay, to Thoman, to a bunch of different places. So if you are picking up gear and you want to support us, uh, you can do that. Uh, let's, uh, let's dive in here and get started here today. We need a quick cough. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, let's let's talk about this one to start with. So I've been um, concerned in the last week about uh, a trend that I see increasing, and it's been around for a while. Uh, I, I don't have a I don't have a banner for this. Let's uh, let's let's create one real quick because that's the beautiful part of uh, of Streamyard. Uh, but have you ever seen this pop up in uh, any of your social media feeds? It'll be like. Hey, drop your links if you want to get, and it, it goes by a number of different names. It's like, if you want to get some radio play, drop your links. If you want to get onto some Spotify playlist, drop your links. Do you want to uh, get in front of A&R people at record companies, drop your links. And a lot of people proceed to drop links to their music. Now, there's a few things at work here, right? There's the there's a bit of psychology going on here. So why why are people dropping their links? Well, it's it's because they want airplay. Like you know, people want people make music to be heard. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Uh, everyone that makes music, pretty much, we want music to be heard. Uh, unfortunately, any time that there is someone who is uh, not desperate, that's the wrong word, who is very keen for something to happen, there are going to be people that exploit that enthusiasm from people. So my question to you, if you're here live or if you're watching in the replay, and I did ask this over on the community tab over at uh, Studio Live Today YouTube channel, is have you ever had this? Have you ever dropped your link? And by meaning, have you ever linked to your music on one of those social media posts saying, drop your links here? And what happened? Has anything good happened for you? Has anything bad happened for you? I'll give you my opinion in a moment. But yeah, if anyone does have any feedback on that, do let me know and uh, let me know here live in the chat. Uh, hello to the folks who are here live, by the way. We've got uh, Josiah Manley, Mark Bro is here. Hello to Joe Glenn, uh, Barry Smith. Are you going to get the iPhone 13 when it comes out? Uh, pff, I don't know. <laughs> is it even rumoured? I, I don't keep up with the iOS rumours these days. Uh, what are you, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I've got a video on that on Aurea Pro versus Cubases 3. You can check that out here on the channel. Uh, Josiah says, uh, what iPhone case do you use? At the moment, I use a super cheap one that I bought on eBay for like $10. <laughs> uh, Thomas Christ says hi uh, to all as well. I hope you are doing well. Uh, I believe there's some sort of football or soccer, as we call it here in Australia, going on at the moment. Uh, something to do with some Euro final. So uh, I can't imagine that anyone uh, in, in the UK is around at the moment. <laughs> They're all probably watching the football. And last I checked, it was one all. Uh, so yeah, I don't, I don't know... Uh, uh, what you're hoping for, but uh, I'm sure all of our England fans out there will be very much hoping that uh, that uh, England can get up in that one. Uh, just, I'm just dating myself what, for those that are watching this in the future. So here's the problem: the the, the old drop your links, and uh, you know I won't, I won't show any here. Uh, but if you go onto Facebook, if you go onto Reddit, if you go onto Twitter, if you go anywhere, basically there'll be people that you've probably never heard of that are called something like Music Biz Studios with a Z. 
and they'll say, yo, uh, we've got hookups with the best playlists on Spotify. Drop your links and we'll get you featured. And you go, okay, cool. I'll, I'll drop my link. I'll put it down in this uh, in this you know thread. And then hopefully something good will happen. Well, here's what generally happens. Uh, you generally get a message because uh, the idea here is you follow them, they follow you, and then you'll get some sort of instant message saying, oh, thanks, your song was fire, brah. Uh, now, all I need you to do now is to, to, to fill in this form. Just give me your email address and give me your credentials and we'll get you, we'll get you happening. Yeah, you, you've now entered generally uh, what is known as a sucker list because uh, you're now part of the uh, the the pro, the, the um, marketing of this particular person or this particular group, and it goes in a number of different forms. Some are a little bit innocuous in that they literally just use your email address, and then suddenly and mysteriously you get spammed. Some will get your phone number. And again, suddenly and mysteriously, you start getting a bunch of spam calls and robocalls to your phone number. Others are a bit more nefarious in that they'll actually start asking you for money. Yes, because you know what? There's always money in everything. So if uh, you go down this path, it will then suddenly become, oh, yeah, I've got this great playlist I can get you on. Um, uh, it just It's only going to cost you $20, and that's just to you know, they cover the cost, and I don't know what. They make up stuff every time. So, yeah, just pay $20 and you get on this. Or, oh, I've got a great hookup with, uh, with a guy over at, at Spotify. Uh, for forty nine dollars, they can get you a thousand followers or ten thousand followers on Spotify or uh, fifty thousand plays on Spotify. So there's a, a direct connection here from what I talked about a couple of weeks ago, which is the um, the, the the shysters that are going to sell you on for it getting uh, buying subscribers or buying followers or buying plays, and the shysters that are going to try and uh, tap in to your desire to uh, to be famous, to get plays, to get lots of streams, to get lots of followers. And uh, yeah, try to encourage you to do that. So I say all that to just say, be careful. Uh, if someone if someone in a Facebook group says, hey, I want to listen to some cool new music, just drop your link and I'm going to listen to you all. Fair enough. And again, I, I often feel like a hypocrite because I do a weekly show called Your Music Live where I invite people to share their songs and to provide me with a link to their song and their email address. Now, because I have worked in sales and marketing before and I know the Spam Act and I know the Privacy Act like the back of my hand, I know that I'm not going to utilize any of that information for any nefarious means. Uh, even if I wanted to, I wouldn't and couldn't. And uh, I know it's against the law, so I'm not going to do that. I use that to make a really cool show, which hopefully many of you enjoy. So for two hours, we play a bunch of independent music. I promise nothing. <laughs> I promise no exposure over and above that. And I promise nothing in return. I'm just going to play your tunes because it's a cool show. So uh, yeah, I wanted to put that out there before someone says, hey, Pete, but don't you do exactly that? Don't you go out there soliciting people's songs? Yeah, sort of, uh, but my promises are, uh, are zero. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully that uh, that explains it. But yeah, let, let me know what you think, if you've had uh, any uh, any of that sort of thing going on. Um, Josiah Manley, uh, I saw something about you were at a hockey game, kind of. Yeah, so uh, as Mark says, uh, I used to be an announcer at the local ice hockey ring uh, rink here. So yeah, I, I used to um, do the PA announcing. So when it was like, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ice, your Adelaide Adrenaline. So yeah, I, I did that for a few years for both the uh, Adelaide Adrenaline men's team and the Adelaide Rush women's team. So you always see me in hockey jerseys uh, and whatnot. Uh, yeah, tw Twitter, yeah, slaps, slaps it has it. Twitter it has it, Joe. Uh, SoundCloud. Didn't even mention SoundCloud up front, but SoundCloud is synonymous with having shysters jumping in, sliding into your DMs and saying to you, hey, uh, really fire track. Uh, I think I can make you a star or uh, I'm going to get you lots of streams on Spotify. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's a bit like... Like everything, uh, it, what is it, caveat emptor, buyer beware, like if it sounds too good to be true, it generally is, G always go with that, go with the sniff test, right, go with the sniff test, uh, feisty heisty, hello, good good name, how does uh, one send you an email with an iTunes link, uh, my email address, in the description, you can find my email address, or if you're looking to get a play on Your Music Live, it is uh, studiolivetoday.com slash YML, simple as that. Uh, have you ever played in a live show? Not in a really long time. And I guess it depends what you mean by a live show. Uh, I do play live here on the internet. I do a happy hour show like the 80s show I did just yesterday. Uh, and I have played those live at, uh, at venues from time to time. But in terms of an actual live show, don't tend to play out live very much. But hopefully we'll change that in the future. Hello to Dwight Bailey who's checked in. And hello Cole, Cole in the clouds. Hey Truth Guitar Method. I uh, hope you are all doing well. All right, let's get into some something a bit interesting and practical that I wanted to display this week. I, I talked about it in the open, 
And this is something that should hopefully help. Speaking of playing live, uh, this is something that should hopefully help people out uh, if you are recording yourself playing or if you want to record yourself singing or playing guitar or doing something of that type. And that is, why is it that when you record using an audio interface that it records onto the left channel only? Well, I'm going to explain this here right now and I'm going to do that with the help of camera two. Are you ready, camera two? Are you ready to come on in? Hello, camera two. There we are. There's camera two. So uh, camera two is pointed down here at my audio setup. And what you'll notice here is I have my mixer. This is my Zoom Live Track L8. This is the one I'm coming through right now talking to you. And you can see my uh, channel one there is my microphone going up there. Channels uh, five and six here are actually coming out of this. So this is my Steinberg UR22C. And this is actually plugged into my uh, iPad. And can, can I add all these together? I don't think I can. I think I need to remove that one to add in the other screen, or can I do this? Oh, up there you go. We can do that. So I have, <laughs> I have my iPad running here. It's running GarageBand. Uh, if you don't believe me, I don't know why you would. Uh, I can hit play here. Life doesn't have to be perfect. And when I stop that, yeah. So that's actually coming through, and that's coming through on this uh, this channel here. If we come back to here, oh, let's just bring this one in as a solo layout. Um, just confirm, if, if you can't hear me at any point, I'm trying some experimental audio stuff here, so just let me know. So that's coming through here on these two channels, the stereo channel coming out of here, and uh, this is my microphone. Let's just bring this around a little bit so you can see the mixer a bit more. So I've got a microphone plugged in here. Now the way a two-channel audio interface works like this Steinberg UR22C is that the left channel is literally the left channel. And the right channel is the right channel. So here's what a lot of folks ask me. They're like, Pete, I recorded myself and I, I recorded myself playing guitar and my microphone. And guess what? My mic was on the left and my guitar was on the right. So instead of getting a dual mono setup where everything's on both channels, you get all of the microphone on the left and you get all the guitar on the right. That's by design because two channel interfaces are actually utilizing stereo audio to work to provide that second channel. One channel is just the left channel and one channel is just the right channel. It basically just pans it across and that's how it works. So I thought I'd go with a, a practical example here today to show you how this works, but then also to show you how quick and simple it is using something like AudioShare to actually convert it. Now AudioShare, by the way, it's about a $3 or $4 app. Just buy it. I don't say this about a lot of things. You can use other free software to do the conversion, but AudioShare just works so much better that I recommend just buying Audio, audio Share uh, because it does these conversions really quickly and easily as you're about to see. So what I'm going to do, we'll, uh, we'll come back over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, and let's see, this is going to be super weird and inception-y here, but we're going to actually go over to my camera app <laughs> here on the iPad, which uh, I've not tried before. So we'll go into camera. Uh, yes, it's pointing down at the desk, but if we flip this camera around, you're going to get a really bad angle shot of me. Hello. Yeah. Uh, here's an example of why you never use this angle because um, it adds about four chins and it makes my head extra shiny. So never be looking up your nose, never have a camera angle. That's why you'll notice my camera angle on these shows is always above. Uh, not that I'm a vain person, but uh, you know, you don't want to, you want to give yourself at least a bit of a head start. Anyway, I'm going to use this to, to demonstrate how this is going to work. Because if I grab this microphone now, it's not monitoring, but I can see that it is actually coming through into the, the Steinberg UR22C. And you'll hear this once I actually record this. So we're going to just record a random sample of a song. So let's try this here now. Oop, we've hit photo. We need to go to video. There you go. There's video. Oh, it's tracking me. It's doing all those cool things. So let's, uh, let's sing a little song here. Yeah, when you're going down to the railroad track. Yeah, girl. It's always got to be a yeah girl at the end, doesn't there? Uh, we'll pause that. Uh, so that is now done. We can go over to our photos app now to uh, to see what has happened there. There's all my photos in here. You can see I've done, been doing some testing here beforehand. And we can go to this photo here. And if we turn the mute off. Going down to the railroad track. Yeah, girl. And what you're hopefully hearing there is that, uh, yeah, that's rough, right? Because it's put everything on the left side. So if you're listening on stereo headphones, uh, you'll notice, or if you're listening on speakers, that, that everything is on the left. And uh, if we come over here and uh, just go back to this one, you'll even be able to see this. So if we go to the solo layout here again, look at the mixer here. When I play this back again, you'll notice that everything is on the left channel here. Yeah, when you're going Nothing on the right channel, the everything coming through track. on the left.
So that is a problem, right? Because if you record yourself singing or you record yourself playing using a stereo interface like the Steinberg UR22C, then you're going to have everything on the left. How do we fix it? Well, there's a couple of different options here. Now, because I use video, and if I wanted to make this a video, I actually use, so the fir first option is the most expensive option, and this is to use an app called LumaFusion. Now, it does cost you about $20 or $30, depending on where you live and depending on when you buy it, uh, but it is my go-to app. As you can see here, I, I record myself and do random weird stuff in here, uh, but LumaFusion makes this super simple because what we can actually do is create a new project here in LumaFusion. We'll just create a blank project, won't do much in terms of the settings, and uh, what we can do is bring in I'll bring my mouse over here so you can see where I'm mousing. We'll bring in this that we just, because you've got direct access to your photos. So we can go to our photos as a source. We can go into here and we can grab this movie that we just created. So we're going to grab this, drag it down to our timeline. Now, again, you'll be able to really clearly see and hear when I play this, that it's all on the left. Yeah, when you're Look at going that. down to the railroad Problem, yeah? track. But don't worry, because LumaFusion's got you covered. It's got a very simple way to adjust this audio. If all your audio is on the left, we can actually do a cool little trick here, which is if we double tap on this one, it's going to take us into this, which is our speed and source. We actually want the video here. And if we go to configuration, there is a, a cool little, where is it, volume? No, I've got to find it now. Uh, is it under configuration? Stereo, channels, stereo. There we go. So uh, under configuration channels, you can see here at the moment it's stereo. What we can actually choose to do though is fill from the left or fill from the right. Now this is a super handy dandy little tool because if everything's on the left as you can see there in our stereo waveform, if we go fill from left, look what happens. Boom! Our left channel is now a dual mono channel and if we come back here and we play this again, we'll find... Yeah, when you're going down to the railroad track. Perfect stereo goodness. Yeah, super cool. So that works a treat. That's very, very cool. What if you don't have LumaFusion, you don't want to invest in that, and you just wanted to fix this with the audio? Well, there's other ways to do it. It gets a little bit clunkier at this point, but we can do it. So if we go back to our photos, our photo library here, uh, oh, there we go, uh, and we go to this photo, what we can do is if we actually export this, so we'll, uh, now it's not going to show you this because... It's, this is a weird thing. It doesn't show this because it, when you're displaying through AirPlay, it's actually AirPlaying the video as opposed to showing you what's up here. But there is a share sheet up here that can allow me to save this as a file. So I'm going to basically, you've seen this before. In fact, you know what I can do? I, you, you can see it over on this one here. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll come here. Sorry, we'll, uh, we'll just go back to here and I'll bring this one as a solo layout. This is a bit fun, isn't it? There you go. So now you can see what's going on here. So, oh, not that. So we'll come here and we will, uh, what we've done is we've hit the share button at the top here. Boom, like that. And then we've grabbed this and we're going to scroll down and we're going to save this to our files. Boom, save to files. Just stick it in our Studio Live Today folder and hit save. So that's now saved that video file into our files, which means that we can now bring it over into Audio Share, which is what we're going to do now. Let's just uh, let's just come back over here and uh, remove the second camera. Boom. Come back to here, uh, so I can just put this down without making it all shake and shake, rattle and roll there. So that that is all cool. Uh, let's go back to our display here, where we just have the picture of me, an unfortunate picture of me there, and we'll come back over here. Now, if we go into our Files app, still with me? So you can see why LumaFusion is such an easier way to do this. Just, just get LumaFusion. But if you don't, this is what we can do here. So I'm in here. I'm in my files app. Where we saved that was in my Studio Live Today folder here. And there I am. So there's my, my file. What we can actually do is bring this into Audio Share. So if we go to Audio Share over to here and we tap on this one, Audio Share, uh, we can actually import this into Audio Share. So if we go to the Add button here, uh, oh, not, not add folder. I haven't used Audio Share for a while. This is the one we want. We want to pick a file and we want to go into Studio Live today and we want to grab that one. So this is going to bring this file into Audio Share, this movie file. Has that not worked? Have I have I got this up uh, the wrong way? It's not brought the audio in. Uh, maybe I've got to use the iMovie first. There you go. There's an epic fail for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that AudioShare could do this, and I thought last time I tested it, it actually worked in here. 
Uh, so no, you, use uh, use LumaFusion because uh, because you've used this from the camera roll, brought it in as a quick time movie, which Audio Share doesn't support and therefore can't convert. Because what I was going to do is use what I've done before, which is do something like this and actually convert your file here, and you can actually convert it into mono, which we've done before. But it appears, and this is the beauty of live, that that doesn't actually work here. So uh, th what we'd probably need to do is uh, is convert it or to put it into iMovie. Let's just let's just see if we can really quickly do this. Otherwise, I've been an absolute uh, shyster to myself and lied to you about this. So we'll come in here to iMovie. We'll just delete out whatever we were doing here. What were we doing there? Some sort of weird demo that we did last time. Uh, and let's bring in, we'll just delete everything. Let's bring this in again from our video and recently added and bring that one in. Do, do, do. Uh, add that one. All right, so that's now in our timeline. I'm just trying to see if we can uh, export this now. So I'll go back out here, my movie. Can we export this? And then when this is actually, if we save this video, uh, save it to files, it's exporting it. It's probably not going to work. <laughs> and we'll put that in our Studio Live Today folder. Let's just see if this is going to work to bring it here into Audio Share or not so much. Uh, we need to now add it again. Add it. Pick a file from Studio Live Today. Boom, boom, boom. iCloud Drive. Where are we? Studio Live Today. There we are. So here's the My Movie folder file. Is this going to be any better? Because now, no, it's still, there's still, it still keeps in a quick time movie format. Uh, so there you go. It can't be done. <laughs> so buy LumaFusion <laughs> because you can do the conversion there. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've done this before. Maybe I've done it with the Voice Record 7 app. Maybe I'm getting myself all confused. Let's, uh, let's double check this because maybe we can actually uh, bring this into Voice Record 7. In fact, we've got to go to the Files app, don't we? Let's go to Files here. Let's see if we can send this, this original image file. If we send it to, uh, share it. And we send it to Voice Record 7. Is that going to work? <laughs> it probably won't because it's a uh, video file. It'll probably say, nope. We could use File Converter though, couldn't we? Yeah, there's, there's another option. So yeah, let, let's just do this real quick. File Converter. Uh, we've showed this before, this last little green one. File Converter, uh, Audio Converter. And we want it to be, let's just turn it into a WAV file, shall we? You then have to like do a lot of funkiness with this. So we'll start that conversion. Do I want to go premium? No, oh, I've got to watch an advert to continue. You know what? I'm bailing. I'm bailing out of this one. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm trying to find a way. I, what I'll do is I'll go away and I'll try and find a way that we can actually do this for free. I don't know that it's going to be super simple and super possible, but there's got to be a way. And uh, once I get that way, I will uh, create a tutorial on it. But um, yeah, if you've ever wondered, again, right back to the premise of the whole video, is if you've ever wondered why you're only getting audio on one side or the other, it is simply because a two-channel audio interface is a stereo audio interface, not a two-channel one. There you go. Uh, yeah, I, I know. We, we, we were deep into it. We were deep down there. Uh, but yeah, LumaFusion uh, is not free, but uh, it is so fun and powerful. And uh, iMovie does indeed look a bit like a children's program in comparison. Uh, all righty. Let's uh, make sure that we have caught up with any... Uh, oh, hello, Gary Hubs, by the way. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing I want to watch on TV today. Nothing, including, uh, including European football. <laughs> Uh, Barry's got a question. How old was I when I first started uh, doing YouTube for GarageBand? Uh, well, it's 2016, so how old am I now? 42. So how old was I then? 37? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> yeah, I've been doing this for uh, coming on six years now um, and still having a lot of fun. Uh, do I have any? Uh, Dean Turner. Hello to you, Dean Turner. Do you have any videos for stopping 808 kicks and heavy bass lines from clashing? Sort of. So I do uh, sort of have videos on that. Let's uh, Let's jump over here. Uh, where's my, where's, where's my spy camera? I'm trying to find my, uh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> I've, uh, I've done the thing, uh, that, uh, has caused problems in the past where I've got, uh, I've got an issue, but you know what? I think this time around, uh, I was hoping that with my new setup that the, the Mac wouldn't crash like it's done in the past. It has crashed. And we are going to have to reboot, but maybe, just maybe, I can um, I can resurrect things by jumping over here into the uh, the iPhone. Um, I know that the, the audio is generally coming through and working okay. 
uh, and uh, I can I can grab the iPhone over here. Yep, I can I can actually check that we're working correctly because I've got the uh, the iPhone over here. So I won't panic and just throw things throw out the baby with the bathwater here. I will, however, uh, come in here and see if I can. Uh, See, my mic is muted on this one. Uh, I'm just going to, <laughs> I'm going to have to do some experimental weirdness here uh, by changing around the micro, the camera on this phone, and flipping this one around to my front-facing camera. See, I, I honestly thought we were past this, but uh, I'm, I'm still finding a way, and it's almost definitely reflector-related because it's when I get into, when I get into a lot of stuff with uh, with reflector here that it seems to cause problems. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my camera here. You can see the. We, we, we had this problem a couple of weeks ago and then I thought we were resolved and then it appears that there is no resolution. So uh, we will we will continue on with this and then I promise we'll get on with the second half of the show because it seems that my computer just needs a wee bit of a reboot and then we're going to talk about some other things that are not related to things breaking down. So uh, what I'll do is I'll try to uh, I'll try to stay in uh, here in this one. Is this gonna is this gonna let me when I leave here? Is it gonna have me in the camera? We'll find out. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see if this is going to work uh, while I reboot. And uh, I'll be back in about two minutes. So please hang in there, folks. And I'll see you real soon. If this goes completely away, I'll uh, be back soon. So I'll see if uh, I'll see if the microphone's coming through here. It's probably not, but uh, we'll see. We'll get ourselves reset up and see what happens. <clears throat> ba, 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 ba. In case you can hear, in case I'm coming through, I'll just continue talking. I don't think it's working. I don't think you're going to get audio through here because I didn't have that camera on when everything went to Hecaruni. Uh, so we'll just see if we can get back on track. And if we can, great. And if we can't, stuff happens. Oh, I can see myself up here now. Uh, hello? Did it, did it just revert to this one? I'm not sure. So I'm just going to keep talking in case it is actually showing there. Uh, and we're going to have to quickly go back to StreamYard in case this isn't a thing. And uh, the good thing about StreamYard is that it should still be here. Uh, that, is a, that is the plus sign. The good thing about it is that I should still be here. And I should be able to jump back in here like so and uh i should, I should be, able be able to come, come back, back in. in there you go, there you go. so uh, i wasn't sure if you could hear any of that we'll find out afterwards we'll turn that microphone off <laughs> we'll come back over here now this is where you get to again see a little bit of behind the scenes stuff i had to do a complete reboot of my computer there and i'm really going to have to um i'm going to have to find a better solution or or talk to um talk to uh, who is it reflector about the the quality of their uh, their their program because it doesn't seem to be working. There you go. I've I've gone to webcam settings now, by the way, which is what I use to get things up. Dean Turner is still there. Uh, boop, boop, boop. So we'll, we'll get rid of this one. There we go. All right. Ah, oh, we are back. We're back in business. So yeah, the beauty of Streamyard. Um, so whilst uh, I'm a little bit unhappy with Reflector because it seems that at the moment every time I try to reflect my iPad and look, I've got I know I've got a complex setup. The the setup that I use here is that I, um, I, I reflect my iPad, but then I want, to use, um, I want to use the audio through my mixer. So I do have a much more complex setup than uh, most people would use, but it should still work. Uh, I, I don't really know why it, uh, it, it won't work. So what, what I might need to do is because it actually worked okay to use, um, to use this camera that I've got, my camera two here, is that what I should do is just use this. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think I need to simplify down my setup and just have a static camera set up pointed at my iPad. That way you can actually see what's going on and I don't have to worry about potential breakdowns like that because uh, as you saw before, and I don't know if it showed while I wasn't, uh, while I wasn't here, but um, yeah, just having that second camera there, I could have my iPad in front of this and it might actually work a little bit better. Why don't we get on back with the show now that we're actually here again? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, d double peat is uh, is not a good thing. Let's let's get on with it because uh, we had a bunch of stuff, and now I'm going to have to reset up my tabs here that I had before. 
but that's okay. Uh, I want to ask. Uh, I want to talk about this. Uh, this video. There's two videos actually that I want to talk about here. One is, uh, as I mentioned at the start, from Glenn Fricker over at Spectre Sound Studios, uh, and he has a video which is 15 mistakes every home studio makes. And I thought it was uh, it was super cool. Let's uh, let's let's take a look at Glenn over here. Uh, we'll, we'll share the screen. No, that's that one. <laughs> <laughs> we'll share the screen here. Uh, so if you don't know Glenn, you'll probably know him when you see him. He looks like that. Very cool dude. Does swear a little bit more than I do, perhaps. But um, yeah, he's got some really good information here. And why I love his videos is that, look at this, he's actually got down in the description, yay, timestamps. Any video more than 10 minutes needs timestamps, yeah? I, I don't put them on my live shows, but any of my regular videos, they do have timestamps. So we're going to go through uh, the, the 15 different things that uh, that Glenn says that are mistakes every home studio makes. And let me know here in the chat, uh, do you make these? Do you make these uh, Do you make these same mistakes? Uh, because I sure as heck do. Uh, there's some that I don't make anymore, but I did. And there's some that I still make on the regular. So uh, let, let, let's go through these now because I thought it might be a bit fun if we adjust this. All right, so number one is uh, mixing on headphones. Now, I do mix on headphones. I do have monitor speakers, uh, but I do mix on headphones quite a bit. It is the reality of the home studio that some of us uh, you know, live with or other people. So I understand that if you're a professional, like if you're mixing other people's music and you want to make sure that it's absolutely pristine, yeah, mix, mixing on monitors is definitely required. For me, a decent pair of monitor headphones can do most of the job. Should you still then go and listen on other speakers and do reference listening? Yes. But what do you think? Do you mix on headphones? Do you think that uh, th that it's uh, viable and feasible to do that? I do. Uh, number two is that monitors are set up incorrectly. Uh, so this is sort of part part two of that, is that if you are mixing... Sorry, I just had to adjust my... Uh, my, my mixer here because it, it rebooted. Uh, if you are mixing your monitors, having them set up correctly. So a lot of people will just have their monitors like sitting on the desk facing out to them and that's not the right way to set them up. You want to have your monitors up on stands and uh, you can see here in the in the bit that I showed here, I'm just going to remove that second camera, uh, that yeah, you can get monitor stands, you can have them separate. You really want them to get them up off your desk and you want to have them tilted in towards you. Basically, there's a triangle that you want to create uh, of your monitor speakers around uh, around your ears. So that is, uh, that is number two. Uh, number three is get your PC case off your desk. Now, I'm using a uh, Mac Mini now which doesn't actually make any noise. So it doesn't vibrate, it doesn't have a fan. But I can tell you that when I used my PC and it's still, it's sitting down there, it was always off my desk because that thing sounded like a 747 taking off, like a, literally an old school 80s jumbo jet. Uh, so yeah, do get your noise sources away from stuff. And a lot of the time when I hear people that come to me and they're like, Pete, I've got these really noisy recordings, all this background noise, all this hiss. I say, um, where are you recording? And they're like, oh, in my bedroom. I'm like, do you have a computer in there? Yeah. Do you have air conditioning on? Yeah. Do you have like, there's just so many things that can create background noise and you, you won't realize exactly how noisy they are until you turn them all off. Uh, not having a cooth treatment, he says, looking at his bare walls. Yeah. Look at, and uh, once again, th this is coming from Glenn, who's talking about, you know, what if you're running a home studio and you're being paid by bands to, to record them and mix them and master them, then yeah, get yourself some acoustic treatment. Can you use sort of, not not PC to say redneck versions, uh, can you use sort of more cheap budget versions these days? Yeah. So I, I make sure that I'm always at an angle like this. The blue couch there is not just because it's an awesome blue couch. It actually is absorbing sound as, as other curtains. I've got big, thick, heavy curtains there. So I do try to do what I can. You'll still hear that there's quite a bit of reverberance in this room. It should be sound treated. It can't be because it's a multi-purpose room. It's just the reality of what a lot of us have. No soundproofing. And keep in mind that soundproofing is different to actually to uh, to acoustic treatment. So uh, acoustic treatment, and, and actually in, in the video, Glenn actually talks about acoustic treatment and he like shows pictures of people's wardrobe and like using clothes. So you can literally use like heavy clothing and things like that as acoustic treatment. But soundproofing is quite different. So soundproofing is actually stopping noise from getting out of your room. If you've got other people, if you've got neighbors, if you've got um, people uh, in your house that you want to stop from hearing your sound, that can also be important. Uh, don't check out. So when you're recording other people, and a lot of these are, you know, if you're running a studio and you're helping other people, don't check out. So don't sit there on your phone and, you know, texting when you should be recording someone. Most of us, I'd say, are recording ourselves. So maybe that's not relevant. Uh, not fixing it in the mix. 
how many people have been fixed in, how many people have recorded something and said, uh, I can fix it in the mix. It doesn't matter if, uh, if I've got a, a janky uh, tune here. I'm just going to use some mixing hacks and tricks to fix it. No, get it right at the source. Uh, don't try and fix it in the mix, even though all of us uh, tend to do that. Uh, don't edit out the humanity. So sometimes, um, yeah, you can be tempted to edit out the humanity, which means that you're going to uh, you know, make everything on the grid. Remove those, uh, those little imperfections that actually make a song kind of cool. Like I always, I always use examples like um, R.E.M., like Michael Stipe has songs where he's literally, like there's one song where he's like, he, he laughs halfway through a, lo- a, a lyric, but it sounds cool. And if they replace that with another take, it wouldn't sound as cool. So sometimes you don't need things right on the grid. Don't edit out the humanity. Uh, don't be afraid to make a decision. Yeah, I know all of us, uh, are you an overthinker? Yeah, do you, do you subscribe to the University of Overthink? I sure do. If you're an overthinker, sometimes it can be hard to just make a decision. And especially now that we've got digital audio workstations, you're not printing anything to tape. You can adjust your EQ, you can adjust your plugins, you can adjust everything over and over again. Yeah, resist the temptation, make a decision, jump into it. (laughs) Check your drum mics every take. Well, again, that's pretty specific to someone who's recording drums. But yeah, if you're recording bands or if you're recording anything or even yourself, yeah, do always jump in and monitor because the amount of times that I've recorded something, I've gone and done a second take, but something's moved or something's shifted, and it's not till I then play it back afterwards that I realize that things are not going well. Yeah, so be, be super conscious of where your mic is. Uh, phantom power can ruin your mic. Yeah, so who's um, who uses a dynamic or a condenser mic here? Uh, yeah, there you go. Mark's an overthinker. Uh, a lot of us are, absolutely. Uh, but the, the thing here is, yeah, don't, I'll, I'll try and find the bottom here. Uh, this one here. Yeah, phantom power. So if you're using a nice condenser microphone, or in fact, a dynamic microphone is even worse. So for instance, I had the dynamic microphone plugged in here and uh, we'll add this back in here down here. So when I was using this one here earlier in the show, uh, I have phantom power running through this Steinberg mixer, uh, this Steinberg interface. Now, A, that's not needed. So what I should have done is before we actually did this, I should have turned off the phantom power. That's that's thing one. And thing two is uh, never unplug and replug a microphone while there's phantom power going through it. Any time. It go, goes with everything. If you, Before you're unplugging and replugging any sort of cable, turn everything off. Like, just make sure that you don't have power running through it because the easiest way to cause a short or to make something uh, no longer function is to actually plug it or unplug it while it's on, while there's power going through it. And especially if you're running phantom power through a dynamic mic that doesn't even need it. Uh, As Glenn said in his example here, he ruined um, a couple of very nice microphones by uh, doing exactly that. So be be careful with your power. Uh, (laughs) You've got one here, which this is why it's funny. Uh, Don't leave the bathroom unlocked. So yeah, if you've got other people and you're recording... Go to the toilet, lock the bathroom. Just a bit of fun. Don't mix with your eyes. <gasps> How many of us are guilty of this, of mixing with our eyes? Now, back in the day, uh, when you were mixing on things like consoles that looked more like this, yeah, you could mix with your eyes, but you could only really see things like levels. So you could only see like the level going up here and you could adjust your levels and your panning and your EQ and whatnot here. Nowadays, we have too many options, I think, in terms of how we can actually do things. So because you can see your waveform, because you can see your EQ and your visualizer of your your, your spectrum analyzer, it's really easy to go, oh, there's way too much bass in this track, and then go in and start tweaking the bass. Whereas really, it's not that there's too much bass in the track. There probably should be. If you use a kick drum, it should be bass in that track, if you, if, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, Don't mix with your eyes, listen. And sometimes um, turn off your screen, close your eyes, put sunglasses, I don't care. Uh, But just listen back to it and go, what is this telling me it needs? What what am I hearing? Not what am I seeing? Because it's really easy to get into that trap of mixing with your eyes and not with your ears. Exactly as Jalen says, mix with your ears, never your eyes. Um, Gary Hub says, I used to overthink until I got handed a deadline of a song per month. Now I make decisions quickly. Uh, the metalhead hippie. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. Like I, I, I'm the same when, when I was getting back into songwriting, I joined the song spark, um, collaborative on Facebook and they have the same sort of thing, a song a month. And there's a, there's a challenge. There's a, a thing that you need to do. What do they call it? a prompt every month? And you create a song to that prompt. So now that I have that, it makes life a heck of a lot easier. Uh, back your tracks up. Yeah. Look, 
back up your stuff, people. If you're on iOS, if you're like me and you're an iOS user, you've got iCloud Drive, so use your iCloud Drive to back up your stuff. Uh, it's, yeah, it, it's a super simple but super important thing. Don't rely on the fact that things are not going to fail, that you're not going to accidentally delete things, that you're not going to send your iPhone in the toilet and take it for a swim. You are going to do all those things at some stage in your life. So be prepared, back up. Nothing feels worse than losing a bunch of work that you didn't have to just because you didn't spend, what, 30 seconds making a backup copy of that file somewhere else. Yeah. Um, and don't take the path of least resistance. Yeah, it's really easy. Because everything's so easy in the studio and in the home studio, it can be easy to take that path of least resistance uh, and just do things the easiest way. Sometimes to get the best sound and to get the best thing, you do have to try different things. Experiment. Do things differently. Try and uh, break it. Yeah. All right. Uh, sorry, I've probably missed a bunch of questions. Now, I did have a question before we had the little failure in the stream way back when, uh, which was, I can't find the question now, but it was asking about, um, about uh, yeah, if you've got like 808 sounds and bass sounds and they're kind of coming together, how do you control that? Now, the biggest problem, especially in things like GarageBand, which don't have the greatest sort of control over sound, is that if you're getting sounds where it sounds like they're competing with each other, it's usually EQ and overall volume. I'm still shocked at how many people uh, just like add loops and add 808s and add kick drums and add drum drum loops and things to GarageBand and never turn down the volume. And I'm not going to tempt fate by bringing my iPad screen back up here, but you know what I mean? When you add a track in any DAW, it puts it at unity gain, which is at like zero dB. Now that's fine. Once you've got one track, four track, eight tracks, you can probably get away with that. But people that I see are mixing 16 and 20 and 24 tracks and they haven't turned a single one of them down below Unity Gain. And at the end, you just got this super hot mix that is really pushing hard. Now, GarageBand does you a favor, but also a disservice, as do some other DAWs, but GarageBand is notorious for it in that it auto limits for you. So if you are going over zero dB, so if you are really pushing too hard and all your volumes are up too loud, instead of GarageBand just making it sound like hot garbage, it tries to use auto normalization or auto limiting to bring down the overall peak volume. Now that's good in the cases where maybe you go over the peak by a little bit. It's like, hey, we got you covered. We're not gonna create digital clipping. We're just gonna pull the volume down. The problem is when you've got a whole bunch of tracks going way over the top, it really does sound awful. Like it, it, you get that, if you've ever heard that kind of that pumping sound, that's the limit to trying to keep things at a reasonable volume, but you just keep pushing that 808 kick. You keep pushing that drum loop way too loud. So my number one tip is if you're finding that you're competing things, start by turning everything down. And a faders down mix can really help you out because it can really help you learn where to put things. So if you've got, say, 16 tracks and everything's sounding really bad, go, take everything down. Put just your kick drum up. Put your 808 bass up. Then bring in your drum loop. Then bring in your instruments. Then bring in your vocal samples. And layer it up and you'll find that everything that you had like right up the top here, it actually sounds way better and more full. This is the thing. People think, oh, I need it to be full. I need to turn it up. No, you can't turn everything up because everything up just creates hot garbage. If you have everything a little bit lower, it means you can automate little bits up. It means you can push things a little bit harder with compression in some points. But again, the biggest mistake I see people make is going in way too hot, having everything up way too loud. So, uh, Keep that in mind next thing you do that. And you're right, there is no such thing as college. Uh, let's see if we, um, if we have any other questions here that have come on through. Uh, Oscar, Oscar, give me the news, I got it. Uh, that's something I have to work on, being more productive. I have 20 songs at most. And the thing about productivity is finishing is more important than starting. And I think a lot of people are really good at starting songs, myself included, and absolutely piss poor at finishing them. <laughs> So making sure that you get to the end of a song and getting it done is super important. So any tips, I would say, make sure that you're creating, recording, and releasing songs. And when I say release, you don't have to release it to, to Spotify or anywhere, but just finishing, getting rid of a song, getting it out of your system. That's what I would do. Uh, your recent song called Life Doesn't Have to Be Perfect, uh, will it be finished? It is finished. Guess what? You can listen to it right now. Uh, I, that was released as part of my EP called Maybe. Uh, you can get that and all of my other music at PeteJohns.com. Um, Gary Hub says, uh, if I hit my eight-track LP target, it will be partly because of it. Yeah. 
It's what I like to call positive time pressure. People think of pressure and time pressure as being a bad thing. It isn't always. A lot of the time, having some positive time pressure can actually really help. It can actually do good things for you uh, because it does. It gives you if if you have what is it? If you have infinite time to do something, you will take forever. It's it's reality, and a lot of people unfortunately don't get things done because they don't have an end date. Just give yourself an end date. And the other thing is, think oh, but but, but what if it's not perfect by then? It won't be. <laughs> Perfection is a myth. It, uh, it is something that you'll be chasing forever. You'll never actually achieve. Excuse me. Apologies. A little frog in the throat. All right. Um, yeah, Murray P says with AUM mixing, you have more mixing control. Yeah, so try it. You can try it. AUM. Cubasis does help you with a bit more mixing control if you want a little bit more about that. There's a lot of other options that you have there. Uh, Jalen, if I may tell a personal story about always making a backup of your content, uh, a few years ago, I got locked out of my Apple ID and now all my old projects that I wanted to share can't be accessed. Yeah, that's, that's horrible. Uh, that, that's not going to be a, a good thing. Uh, so yeah, yeah, do, do back things up. And if you can back them up in more than one place, then do that. Uh, who's watching England versus Italy right now? Uh, me. No, I'm not really. Is it one all still? Someone give us a score update. <laughs> yeah, hot garbage. You can actually do that. Uh, but, 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 uh, let's see. We'll just see if we've got any albums. Um, have you come across any third-party drum kits for GB? There are. So there's ones that I've seen demonstrated before. I haven't actually used them, but I've, I've been intrigued about them and I've been meaning to for a while. One that I get recommended an awful lot is called Soft Drummer. I'm just going to search for it here on my iPad that you can't see because reasons uh so soft drummer it's not cheap so it's 27.99 i think it's about 15 dollars um uh us uh in fact you know what i can do i can bring it up over here i can't i app store soft drummer so this is especially good because garage band doesn't have anything like brushes and any sort of jazz kits or anything like that uh so soft drummer does there you go 27.99 ipad so yeah so you can um you can utilize there's a bunch of sounds in here and as you can see a lot of people have some good things to say about it i don't know why it's not bringing up the uh the screenshots there that's a bit weird <laughs> but yeah it is a it is apparently a uh a really good really good um drum kit and uh, can give you some third party drum sounds if you're not if you're not satisfied with all the drum sounds that you get uh what's to see oh hello thank you hippie my metalhead hippie appreciate it uh boom indeed oh so so what i need to do is go out and buy a burger fries and beer i'll do it i'll, I'll find a way absolutely <laughs> uh it might be a might be mcdonald's actually <laughs> but thank you if you appreciate it uh what is creative town hall and garage band weekly sorry just got into this stuff they're just li weekly live shows and i hope you can join me for them so today is creative town hall where we just talk about all things creativity and we go through videos and we go through uh, apps and we talk about um, recording and mixing and mastering and all that sort of stuff tomorrow is our garage band specific show which i <laughs> I better get things working before that one because uh, I, I do need to display my, uh, my maybe tomorrow will be a Mac GarageBand Mac show because I'll, uh, I'm having issues with the iPad problem. Um, a question from Jalen. Uh, what was the name of that website you shared, letting you share projects in the studio live today group? I think you mentioned during, a, uh, yeah. So that is slaps.com. And uh, we're not brought to you by DistroKid today, but they are a sponsor of the channel, so full disclosure there. But slaps.com, uh, think of it like SoundCloud without as much spam, advertising, promotion, and all that jazz. So this is the place where I recommend you go. And uh, you can see that uh, here you can uh, post your own song, so you can post a tune yourself. And uh, there's a bunch of groups here. So we've got a group for Your Music Live. We've got a Garage Band group, a Create Record Release group. You can see that I've uh, popped 16 tracks up on there so far. So here's all of my tunes that I've got there. And it's just a really simple way because once you've got it up there, you can just hit the play button. And you can uh, add fire to people's tracks. You can save them in there. You can link out to your Spotify or your other places. So for this one, I can put my Spotify link there next door. And then it can go out to the Spotify track for that one. Uh, and yeah, it's just a great discovery engine. So if we think of uh, who's someone I really like here, there's an artist called Jay that I really like um, that shares a lot of stuff here. So yeah, there's there's Jay. So Jay's shared a lot of things uh, on 
uh, your music live. I won't play that tune now in case uh, they've uh, got it copywritten. Uh, but yeah, a lot of artists uh, are sharing here and it's just a simple way. And the reason I mentioned DistroKid is that they are uh, they create this. So this is sort of like a an entry point to releasing your music. You, you don't need to pay for it. It's all 100% free, uh, but you can actually just upload your album artwork, your song file, and then you get a bunch of people. And you can see here that I've already thrown fire on this one and I've already saved it in. You can share it just like that. So if I share this, I can copy this link, throw it here in the chat immediately, and uh, it just takes you straight to slaps.com. So yeah, anyone who's not already a member of slaps.com, highly recommend it. Uh, super great way to, uh, to share your music. So good question, and thanks for that. Uh, Metalhead Hippie, do you work with Reaper? I used to. So Reaper was actually uh, my first what I call big boy DAW. So I did use Reaper for some time um, and I created uh, one, one of my EPs I created in Reaper. So it's my family EP. It was kind of like the first thing that I created before I even got into mobile recording. Um, and since I got into GarageBand, I haven't used it as much. Uh, I have a couple of videos on the channel where I talk about Reaper. So for instance, if we go to my channel here and we search Pete John's Reaper, there's one where I actually mastered a song in Reaper. Um, so my, my song, um, Anxiety, uh, actually, I mastered that one. So I, I, I recorded it in, um, in GarageBand, but I actually mastered it in Reaper uh, just to do the limiting and things. And there was another couple another couple of videos where I talk about uh, mastering in Reaper. But yeah, I haven't actually recorded in Reaper for a while. But now that I'm on this Mac, um, yeah, it's worth a shot because Reaper does work on Mac as well. So that's good. Uh, how do I set a date to a song? Okay, I know how, but how do you make songs as a hobby to people at my work? See that as a positive thing? Yeah, you, you can do it either privately, publicly. You can tell people you're doing it. You can not tell people. You can join private communities. Things like the Create, Record, Release Facebook group, which I'll, I'll give a shout out to here. So if you go to Facebook and you search for Create, Record, Release, you'll uh, get uh, this group pop up over here. And this is the Create, Record, Release Facebook group. Uh, so you can jump in here and you can join that group. We've got 903 members currently. Uh, and there's a lot of very cool people over there who share music, share tips about creating music. And um, yeah, if you don't want to uh, bug your family and your uh, co-workers with your music on a regular basis, which, you know, let's be honest, uh, many of us want to be that way because uh, what's a nice way of saying they don't care? Um, they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> just like you probably don't care about your uh, your Auntie Gwen's basket weaving club, Auntie Gwen probably doesn't really care about your home recording experience. Maybe you'll create a really cool song and then Auntie Gwen will go, nice job, love. Um, but yeah, most of the time, you, you may want to keep it separate and that's totally cool. So create, record, release, join the group and you'll have some fun over there. All right, um, let's uh, come on down. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the other thing. Uh, don't concern yourself too much. Um, I've talked, I've ranted on this a whole bunch in the past, uh, but let's let, let's let's make this let's make this a wee bit of a rant here, because um, I, I didn't actually have a midpoint motivation, and we are fifty two minutes in, so uh, we are going to run a bit long here today. But let's rant on this one because Gary makes a good point. Um, basing your decisions on things that strangers on the internet say is really going to lead to some bad times. So. And the thing is, doing things to please or to impress people, the strangers on the internet that you don't know and probably don't like and probably don't gel with you on a values or on a personal level is a really short, quick way to unhappiness. If you want happiness within yourself, do what makes you happy. Do things for you. You do you. And don't let other people tell you what to do when it comes to your music and your creativity, uh, especially when it comes to what to create. The amount of people I've seen in recent times creating a genre of music because it is popular, it really disappoints me because the sort of music that I like is not popular. It probably never will be as popular as some other types. If you are a metalhead, metal is never going to be as popular as R&B. Uh, if you are a singer-songwriter, singer-songwriter is never going to be as popular as uh, bubblegum pop that we seem to have these days. So uh, could, could I go and create music genres that I don't enjoy? Sure. Would I have a good time? Maybe. Would I feel like I'm actually achieving the things I want to do? No. So yeah, it, it's an important thing to keep in mind that other people will have their opinions on you and what you do, it's never a good reason to do or not do something. Because again, 
think about it on the flip side. Do you care what other people, do you care about Arnie Gwen's basket weaving? No, you wish Arnie Gwen all the best. You really wish she wouldn't bug you about it and talk to you about it for an hour every time you, you go over to her house. But you've got absolutely no problems with her doing it. And it's the same with your recording. Uh, especially where it's strangers on the internet. Seriously. <laughs> um, Gary Vaynerchuk, who's someone that I really uh, admire for, for a lot of things, he's gone off on this NFC tangent at the moment, which I'm not big on. So uh, yeah, I don't quite align with him on the whole cryptocurrency NFT thing. But um, yeah, when it comes to this statement that he says, which is don't buy, you don't need to impress people you don't like. Basically, and the same thing with, with what you do. Don't do things that you don't like doing or that don't gel with you and your values to impress people that you don't like anyway, or even worse, that you don't even know, complete strangers, right? It's a bad way to go. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> oh, hang on. Joe Glenn says, sounds as if Italy is winning judging by the yelling and fireworks and hooters from my neighbours. Oh dear, there you go. Uh, well, like I said, it was one all when we started. Uh, I know England got the first goal, but yeah, there you go. Um, but yes, as, as exactly as Gary says, don't concern yourself with the opinions of others. Um, I had another, I had another one here that I'm going to actually hold over for tomorrow because I'll, I'll do it in GarageBand Weekly instead. Uh, and I, I've put it in, I've put it down. Siri just searched for firework because I said something about fireworks there. Good on you, Siri. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So I've got it down in the description. Uh, there's a really cool video from uh, Mr. Who's the Boss uh, called Dear Apple. And it's the 10 things uh, that he believes that Apple um, kind of missed the boat on, that if they changed, they could actually be super dominant. And uh, they're really interesting things. You can watch the video, have, have a pre-watch of the video if you like. And I'm going to I'm gonna bump it to tomorrow because we're going to run way out of time because we haven't even got to the hidden gems, which is what we're going to get to now. So uh, I, will, uh, I will jump in. Do I have my hidden gems thing here? <laughs> I'm, I'm really not doing well here in terms of uh, having my stuff set up here. Because I thought I actually had a banner that said hidden gems. I'm going to create one. Like I said, hidden gems. <laughs> so every week uh, I, I talk about some videos, some channels, some things that you may want to check out if you don't already know them. Now we already checked about, uh, we already spoke about uh, Glenn Fricker over at Spectre Sound Studios. So yes, do do jump over and, and check out that video. It's very good and uh, Glenn's very entertaining. Uh, not safe for work, uh, not safe for the kiddies, but do check that one out. I wanted to talk briefly on this one because I found it really interesting. Now, if you're if you're older, like me, you'll remember this. If you're slightly younger, this may be a bit of a history lesson and, and you might actually learn something Blizzcon new and different. 2021 oh, it's, uh, it's already playing. Uh, so this is a video uh, from, it's from Knowledge Hub, who I've been getting into big time lately. They have a lot of really cool stuff. And um, this one is about, uh, it is called, The Record Industry is Evil. Yep, here it is. And why is it talking about BlizzCon here at the start? Well, something happened uh, with BlizzCon recently, which is the uh, you know the Blizzards, the World of Warcraft people. They had a stream on Twitch, and uh, we'll see if I'll just come down here. A certain band, yes, Metallica, were playing a live stream during BlizzCon. And what happened is, you might have heard lately that Twitch have become quite aggressive with their removal of copyrighted content. Well, guess what happened? Metallica were playing Metallica music, on Twitch for BlizzCon, which is their music. And you know what Twitch did? It replaced it with generic Twitch music, right? How bizarre is that? Um, sorry, I've, I've realized I've got echoing coming through from this phone and it has been the whole time. I'm like, why can I slightly hear myself in the background? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll turn that off. It's running out of battery anyway. Uh, but yeah, how funny is that? that you think is bad enough when you're playing a cover song. And look, the reason that I don't do a lot of my shows on Twitch anymore is because Twitch and Facebook have both, like YouTube has its content ID system, which is flawed, but at least you know what you to expect. And it doesn't block you, it doesn't stop you. It just takes any revenue you make if you play someone else's music and gives it to them. Or in the case of a cover song, shares it with them. Cool, yeah? Totally cool. But how funny is it that uh, Metallica came, played live, here on this show, and uh, yeah, it, it switched out their music with uh, with just like regular like instrumental stuff. Uh, so this is actually a really great video. It talks about that. It then goes into uh, the whole like uh, dat tape era, like the R, where, where is it? Down here. 
So the, the digital recording revolution, uh, the fact that the uh, RIAA, the Recording Industry Association of America, weren't too worried about things until things like uh, DAT tape came along. And then they're like, oh, you can make a perfect digital reproduction of something. We're scared now. Uh, and they basically shut it down and said, we don't want that to happen anymore. CDs came along, digital stuff, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it all went bad. And then, um, of course, later on down the track, these people came along. Yes, good old Napster. Uh, and Napster meant that those of us that chose to <clears throat> could uh, could download whatever music we wanted to. And uh, yeah, they, they got extra worried again. So uh, really, really good. Uh, what, what, watch the whole thing. It is a long one. It's 24 minutes, uh, but it really does go behind the scenes of what happened, what the record industry does, why it has been the record industry that's been clamping down on these sort of things and been driving, basically driving people away for all this time. Uh, so yeah. It, it, it's it's worth a watch just to for you to cringe and go, oh, I can't believe they did that. Oh, I can't believe they did that. Because at the end of the day, th the good news is that it, it's kind of a moot point now, yeah, because most people have a $10 or $15 subscription to some sort of streaming platform now. We're all kind of paying for our music. You could argue that the artists are not getting the amount that they want to. But here's the problem. Like every other industry in history, Anytime an industry has raged against the machine and has said, no, we don't want progress, we want things to be the way they were, and has stopped progress and technology, it has backfired. Think Kodak, think the newspaper industry. All of these raged against the digital equivalent of themselves and are now dead or very badly dying. And the recording industry has done the same thing. They wanted to keep things exclusive. They wanted to keep people in million dollar studios. They wanted to control all the distribution. They wanted to control all the promotion. Guess what? Now we have our recording studios. For 20 bucks a year, we can distribute to Spotify ourselves with DistroKid and we can promote for free to about 27 different social media platforms just by posting a link. So well done, record industry. You really screwed the pooch on that one. Anyway, go watch the video. It's fun. Um, but... but, but, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, e extra lols for me stopping on the buttholes. I know, right? I just scrolled along and it's like, butthole surfers. How funny. Uh, Joe Glenn says, I had my song taken down not once but twice by Facebook. Won both disputes, but uh, leery of posting anything on Facebook. Yeah, I I've just gone to YouTube for everything. And again, YouTube's content ID system, not perfect. But is it better than everything else? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, what do you mean? Lars is great. Just ask Lars. I know, right? And look, I know. Part of me is that I understand that these are people that are trying to make a living and uh, I don't begrudge anyone from trying to make money, but you can't, you can't change the platform. The market is the market, the customer is the customer and the, the technology will change over time. And if you, you've got two choices, you either adapt or you die. And when it comes to things like that, if you don't want to adapt, you die. And we've seen it again and again. And it's a little bit of a nice thing to see, a bit, bit, of, bit of karma, a bit of comeuppance. Um, Bear says someone I met was a professional guitarist in the 70s and 80s. He played with Elton, Hall and Oates and many more. He said that being on tops is like being being on the top is like being on Mount Everest. There you go. Uh, no air, is that what he means? <laughs> Uh, b b b Audible Video says, uh, one small correction to what you're saying, the industries want to protect their monopoly cash flow. It's not a rejection of tech. True. Yeah, yeah. Oh, spot on. Um, yeah, so if, if I meant to say, if I said, look, if, if they could embrace the tech and it would make them the same amount or more money, they would be all in. And many of them have. That's the thing. The, the successful ones, successful companies have been ones that have made, like Netflix. Let's take Netflix as the example. Netflix could have done what Blockbuster did and said, no, nah, streaming's bad, physical media for the win, we're going to keep our stores open, we're going to keep sending discs to people, we're going to keep renting things out. Netflix went, ooh, hang on, everyone's into this whole streaming thing, YouTube's massive now, streaming video is growing, let's move away from the sending people DVDs and moving into the streaming video world. And what happened? They crushed it. So yeah, you're right. It's a business decision, and it's where they see that their business model may be um, maybe threatened by technology. And instead of embracing it and moving with the technology, they rage against the machine. Pardon the pun. And uh, there, exactly. Blockbuster could have been Netflix. Spot on. They they had the opportunity. They had more than the opportunity. Netflix with a little upstart. Um, they could have totally been um, been Netflix. They just chose not to because they chose to stick with their model because they thought, hey, we're making a billion bucks a year. Why the heck would we change? Well, you'd change because the market changes. 
And if you don't change, you get left behind. Simple as that. Um, all right, next one I found uh, here is is super cool. Now this is a uh, this is a channel here that you may want to check out. It is called uh, You Can't Unhear This. Great name for a channel, yeah. <laughs> and this one, if you're like me and you're a a music music lover but also a gaming lover. You want to check this one out because this is and a Beatles lover as well. Got a bit of a Beatles theme here today. Uh, how the Beatles rock band was made. Uh, so McLean Dima, uh, and it's a uh, you can't unhear this interview. So it's really interesting. Again, it's like nearly an hour long, but you got some timestamps in there to, to to let you know what's going on there. But it, it talks uh, that there is uh, this dude works for Harmonix or worked for Harmonix, who make the rock band games, and he actually talked in detail about how they made the games. And interestingly. With Beatles, it was actually much more difficult for them because not only did they have to... Because if you're not familiar, let's take a step back. I'll see if they've got some images of here of how they work. So, yeah, so there's there's the Rock Band game, right? So that's how Rock Band works. Guitar Hero is very similar. So you've got a guitar controller and you have to basically hit buttons and strum the little bar and it lines up with the song. Now, it's not exactly like playing a guitar or a bass or drums or singing, or well, singing is, uh, but it's it's a nice replica of it. So what they usually do is they get a song, they get the multi-tracks of it, they strip out the bass, they strip out the guitar, they strip out the vocal, they strip out the drums, and then they just program those. Now, there's a small problem with that. The majority of the Beatles songs were on four tracks at best, uh, and many of them, they don't actually have the multi-tracks left. So they had to just use stereo masters in some case, in some cases, four-track recordings, and actually try and work out what different parts were what. The other thing is, and it was really interesting to hear them talk about this, in some of the songs, they didn't actually know who was singing. So in some where, I can't remember the name of the song, but there's one where controversially, uh, it was it was always thought that it was um, John singing, and it turned out it was Paul singing. Uh, so there, there's all those sort of things that they had to work out as well, as well as sort of animating all the different things. So like I say, it's, it's a... Um, it's, a, it's an hour long, but it talks a lot. So if you're interested in game design, sound design, creating sound for games, programming and developing, and you want to hear a behind the scenes thing, and you're a bit of a rock band or guitar hero fan like myself, uh, jump over and check that one out. It's all worthwhile. Uh, I'll just see if we've got any questions or comments that came through that. Uh, it's Ivan Idea. Hello. Uh, it's Ivan Idea. Hope you're doing well. Um, the path to Mount Everest is littered with the frozen corpses of those who failed, though. There you go. I like that. I like that. Um, I'll just see. No, no other questions that we have there. Uh, what is the song maker that you recommend? Song maker? As in DAW, I use GarageBand on my phone, on my iPhone, on my iPad. GarageBand's good. Uh, if you're looking for a free option on PC, uh, Cakewalk by BandLab is good. And uh, GarageBand's obviously good on Mac as well. So there's some options. And Reaper that we talked about earlier in the show is also really cool as well. Uh, the Dear Apple video we'll, we'll save for tomorrow uh, and we'll talk about that one there. I did put another Beatles video here, which um, is from a channel called Grunge. And uh, I don't know if you've seen any of the Grunges. Yeah, A Day in the Life. There you go. Thank you, Gussie. Gussie Wells coming in with the info. Yeah, it was A Day in the Life. Uh, I'm just going to come over here before I, get, before I get pinged for playing that Beatles footage myself. Um, a Day in the Life was the, was the, the song where... It's still, there's still debates. Like Beatles fans around the world are still debating whether it was actually John or Paul uh, that was playing on that one. Uh, but yeah, th this one here, uh, the grunge video here, if you're, if you're interested in sort of the history of the Beatles and the backstory and what happened back in the day, uh, there's the boys in their suits back uh, before all the psychedelics. That's a really interesting one to check out as well. So Grunge do some good little mini documentaries. They're all bite-sized, sort of 10, 12-minute videos. Uh, there's some good uh, info in there and some B-roll footage. And, uh, and yeah, it's just it's just a good watch. Um, it's not super hyped up or super controversial, like, oh, yeah, they hated each other, everything was terrible. Uh, it was just, to the point, has some good information in there. So do check that out. And uh, at Grunge, the channel, uh, actually has some pretty interesting videos. Uh, anything called grunge is going to be interesting. Some of them are a little bit over the top in terms of, uh, you know, the tragic details about this, things you didn't know about, sure, the untold truth of Danny Tre Trejo. So, yeah, some of them are a little bit clickbaity, but for the most part, the information in there is pretty solid. So uh, I would check out grunge over there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, wh what have we got? We've got one more thing here. Two more, in fact. I'm going, to, I'm going to go through two more of these. Uh, so this one here, this one was super interesting. Uh, so this one has, again, the clickbaity title, which was how the iPhone started a dark age of the internet, right? 
clickbait galore. But what it actually talks about, um, it's a bit of a, again, it's a longer video and it's a bit of a history of Apple. It starts with the whole, uh, if, if you're not familiar with the, the 1984 Apple commercial, it starts with this. So it starts talking about Apple and their whole Think Different campaign and the fact that Steve Jobs and Wozniak wanted to be different. They wanted to be uh, sort of, because at the, at the time it was like IBM and they were the big boring blue boxes, not blue boxes, but beige boxes and things. So uh, Apple wanted to be the anti that. And it basically goes through the whole history from 84 right through to now, which is that have they really done that or have they done the opposite? So you get about halfway through there and it talks about the introduction of the iPhone and it basically says that the reason it says the start of the dark age of the internet is that its argument the, of this whole documentary is that the iPhone turned the internet from a personal thing to more of a bland, generic thing. So what do you think of this? I'll, I'll see if there's anyone live that has an opinion on this. So for those that were around in the early days of the internet, we're talking about like GeoCities pages. We're talking about news groups and IRC chats. We're talking about uh, telnetting into bulletin boards. We're talking about creating your own homepage that had flashing GIFs and men digging because it was un always under construction. We're even talking about into MySpace and into the early stages of social media where everyone got to do their own thing and it was all very different. The argument that they make in this documentary is that once the iPhone came out, it made the internet conform to it. So if you remember that famous, um, the first iPhone uh, reveal, and we've covered it here on the channel actually, Steve Jobs got up there and he's like, instead of just getting this WAP version of the New York Times that's just text, you get the whole New York Times website on your phone. So the idea there was that you would get whatever was on the web, it would actually be on your phone in full version. Now flash forward a couple of weeks, months, years later, uh, now websites are not only not really developed, but when they are developed, they're developed for the phone. But worse than that, we have apps where it's this completely, completely closed in infrastructure where instead of you going to a website and then you, you can actually interact and do things yourself, you're doing it just with an app and you've only got, you're in this walled garden. And again, the, the argument that they make in the video, which I don't necessarily agree or disagree with in 100%, but the argument they make is an interesting one, which is that, yeah, we, we, we've lost it. Apple came out of the gate saying we're going to be different, think different, everything different. You are the creative, you are the creator. And I thought this was interesting for creators because have they dropped the ball on that? Are they not now the ultimate in monolithic genericness because they're just doing things for the lowest common denominator and they've lost that edge that they had around creators being different? I don't know. I'm interested in your uh, thought. Uh, let me know. Uh, Derek Smith says, uh, I watched it and uh, re it really didn't sell the point. Uh, yes, e exactly right. Um, it, it, it was interesting. It, it took a long time to say one thing. Like I, I, what I explained there in two minutes, it took 40 minutes to explain. But there's some interesting, if, especially if you haven't used, uh, if you haven't looked at the, the history of Apple and you don't know how it all started and you didn't know about Jobs being fired from his own company and then being brought back. And then the introduction of the Mac in 84 to say, hey, things are different now. The fact that, uh, you know, Windows basically just followed the Mac with all of their, um, their GUI and all the Windows operating system. Yeah, so there's some interesting stuff there behind the scenes. We're worth a watch uh, to, to just see what's going on. <clears throat> Russ is here, which means the, uh, the football is probably over. And uh, ooh, I'm, I'm seeing commiserations here in the chat. So does that mean we, uh, we, we, don't, uh, we didn't get a win? That uh, England went down, did they? I believe so. Confirm for me. Uh, yeah, sorry to hear. Okay. Yeah, so it sounds like they may have... Uh, it may be going to Italy. And as an Australian soccer fan, uh, they must have cheated because that's, uh, that's how they won the World Cup semi-final back in... Uh, when was it? 2006? Yeah. Last time Australia made the, the semi-finals. Only time Australia made the semi-finals. Um, yeah. Italy cheated by handballing it in the penalty box. Um, wasn't called... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, this is not controversial or anything, um, but uh, it happened. Um, ben Dover says, I was in uh, junior high in the 90s. Ah, oh, you missed out. Um, well, where was I in the 90s? Yeah, yeah, I was, I was about the same. I was in high school. I used to, uh, the internet was cool. It was this, it was this um, uncharted territory. Uh, these days, like the, the ubiquity of the internet that kids have these days, is, is they, they just don't understand. I don't understand how hard it was and how we had to dial up and all. Anyway, 
Uh, us old guys remember rotary band lines. Yeah. Band lines? Land lines? Yeah. Both. <laughs> uh, Appization of the internet isn't uh, Apple's fault. It's uh, the other corporations. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Is, is the App Store Apple's fault? Like, Because they, I mean, they were kind of the pioneers of the App Store. But, or was it the fact that everyone else jumped on there and, and I don't know. I, I don't think it's, it, nothing is 100% anyone's blame. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if the appification of the internet's a good thing or not. I, I was talking to my wife on the weekend, actually, that remember the early days of Facebook in 2008, no one was using it on their phone. There was no app for it on a phone. There was the web page and it didn't really work that well. And everyone that I knew on Facebook was using it on their, their laptop or their desktop. <laughs> and a lot of people were using, including myself, those little tiny, uh, what were they called, netbooks? They're like, oh, it's, it's like a tiny laptop for the internet. And it's like, they were just rubbish. We, we, we tried to convince ourselves that they were okay, but they were rubbish. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, I know that big tech hears us and monitors too. Uh, everyone hears everything. I, I was going to go on a rant about privacy today, but I'm not going to. Basically, that the privacy stuff that people fear, like the big government spying on them and the corporations and the, the your phones, microphones listening to you, all that stuff is actually, I mean, it's probably happening, but that's not the scary stuff. It's the stuff you don't know and don't even think about that's the scary stuff. <laughs> Ooh, conspiracy theory, Pete. Yeah, I'm, I'm big into the conspiracies. Speaking of conspiracies, uh, yeah, I wasn't going to talk about soccer all day anyway. Um, Tutus says, I've been playing around with a door called Sunvox. It's intended for more video game-like music. Uh, I feel it works really well with GarageBand. I thought you might want to cover it. Sunvox. That's interesting. Let's, uh, let's search it. Let's go uh, Sunvox. Vox. Vox. Let's see what it looks like, shall we? I always, I always like it when people have new ideas here. The best free door. Game Jam. Yeah, okay. It does look kind of cool. It, it looks a little bit like a bit of a, uh, like a Guitar Hero rock band kind of thing. Yeah, nice. Okay, yeah. So it's got almost like an iMovie video creation kind of timeline set up there with with your samples and your key. Yeah, interesting. I always like to hear about new things. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, just scroll down to see if we have any other questions. If you do have any final questions, we will finish off soon because we are way overdue. Uh, but please, um, yeah, please put question in front of your comment if you would like to, uh, to ask a question. Brad Example says, uh, just bought the new iPad Pro 2 terabyte M1 11 inch. My goodness, Brad, that's an upgrade, buddy. Well done. Good stuff. Can't wait to, can't wait to hear what you're producing with that. Uh, there you go. Lots of cheering around here and lots of Italians, uh, bless them. So I assume uh, they lost. Probably, probably cheated. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't, I don't mean to say that. That's, that's really, uh, I'm, I'm going to have, uh, all, all, all of my Italian fans are going to be unhappy with me now. They probably completely legitimately won this time. But um, uh, still a few phone booths around. I, every time I see a phone booth, I just do think to myself, who's, uh, who's, who's, who's using them? I don't know. I've, I haven't used a phone booth in about 10 years, maybe. Uh, yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to have an opinion. <laughs> uh, how do you put my song on YouTube from using GarageBand? Uh, search Pete John's GarageBand YouTube. Got about three or four tutorials that show you how to do it. So uh, yeah, just need to export it as a video. Use iMovie or LumaFusion. Put it all together and get it done. Uh, hey, it's JK Martin. Hope you're doing well, Jim. Uh, yeah, we are. We are well over time here. I've only got one more thing to talk about here. <laughs> phone answering machines the size of a boombox. Yeah, remember those phone answering machines that legitimately use real compact cassettes? So before they had the ones that used the mini cassettes, they had ones that were just like a tape recorder that looked like an old school tape deck. Yeah, that was that was cool. Uh, but, 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 but. I have an idea. Just bought a home in Australia. Come on down. Boom. Very cool. Uh, like it. My first phone was in 2014. Yeah, where was my first phone? Uh, mine was well before that. Uh, I, my first phone was, what was it? It was a Sony Ericsson or an Ericsson back then. An Ericsson like T600 something. Um, it was like a little chunky candy bar kind of thing with an antenna on the top. Um, and that was, and then I moved on to Nokia's after that. So yeah, it's been a while. Been a while. Uh, Patrick Chandler, hello to you. Uh, Jim Shannon on Sounds, hello to you. Uh, everyone's arriving. Have you all been watching the, uh, the football, uh, perhaps. <laughs> so I want to finish with this one. Uh, and um, 
it's it's an interesting, really interesting video that I watched uh, just last night, and uh, it has the intriguing title of "This is Why We Can't Have Nice Things," and it, it crossed over into a couple of things that I find interesting, which is uh, the energy industry because I used to work in it, so light bulbs, and um, the the idea of uh, what do they call it here? Planned obsolescence. So yes, I know this one's super controversial because. It talked about the fact, and really, really interesting, I won't completely ruin everything, uh, obviously very popular video, many of you may have seen it, but it talks through the fact that there was a cartel, oops, I've gone to the wrong video, go back. There was originally a cartel for light bulb manufacturers around the world, a worldwide cartel, we're talking in the 1930s here, because what happened is when light bulbs were first manufactured, and I won't play too much of the video there because I'll probably get a copyright claim for playing another video. But what happened when light bulbs were first made is that the filament in them changed. Over time, it, be, it went from being, a metal, like I can't remember the first metal, but it became tungsten and then it became different fibers, all because an incandescent light bulb needed a filament that uh, had a really, really high temperature of tolerance. Otherwise, it would just melt and burn out. And that was fine. They kept increasing that. So the first light bulbs had like a thousand hours lifespan, then 1500, then 2000. Then the light bulb manufacturers went, hang on a minute. If people buy too many, if people have light bulbs that last too long, they're not going to buy as many. So they got together. This is now illegal now, at least here in Australia. There's actually a law in our Competition Consumer Act against cartels. So you can't do this anymore if you're thinking about it. Uh, but they got together and said, Let's put a limitation. Let's make sure that none of us are making light bulbs that last any more than like a thousand hours. And they did that for like 10 years. And it wasn't until, you know, competition drove things and some of them started making ones that were better. Because again, you can only, it's like, it's like price fixing. You can only do that for a certain amount of time before someone will go, no, I'm going to charge a little bit less. I'm going to make a little bit better. So that kind of happened. And it tells this really good story in the video of going through, you know, the light bulb industry and how that all worked. And then it goes into smartphones and it goes into technology and it goes through a lot of the other things that we're uh, more aware of these days and talks about why planned obsolescence happens and what they actually do in there and uh, how it kind of has infiltrated all of the different industries. And it made me think about the fact that, yeah, uh, one of the things it mentioned is iPhones, and I've got a I've got a practical example here too. This is where it relates back to creators. Is that a lot of people buying are buying things for the right reasons, which is that they need a better phone. Um, I'm going to hold up in front of you the iPhone 10s with its smooth corners and its lovely slick design there, and then I'm going to hold up the iPhone 12 with its harsh, sharp edges and its bold aluminium design. And the thing is, these two phones, there's not much between them. They do pretty much around about the same thing. This one's got an extra camera on it, and this one's got a slightly upgraded chip and a little bit more RAM. Uh, they're both good phones. They both do things. If I was a GarageBand creator and I wasn't doing what I do on this channel and didn't need the power I do for video editing and for a lot of other stuff, I would have stuck with this one because it's absolutely fine. But... One of the reasons that Apple actually changed the design of their phone and then change it back and then change it and then change it back is that if I'm walking around with this and I cared about what people thought, I don't, but apparently a lot of people do, then this is, this is a, showing a sign to people that I am on the last version. Like I'm behind, yeah? I'm sorry. It's, I've, it's still got Safari open here and it still thinks I'm in the stream. So I'm behind the eight ball here. But if I'm showing this, and it's why people don't use cases. See, I use a case anyway. So you can't even really tell with mine because my phone's always in a case. You wouldn't really know if it's a 10, 11 or 12. But people that care want to show that they have the latest and greatest. So that's kind of one thing of the planned obsolescence is to make people buy the latest and greatest and the next best thing. So what do you think? Uh, I also think that a lot of the disposable tech that we get these days is kind of crappy in that it's clearly made. If you go to, uh, here in Australia, Kmart, not to pick on you, but it's definitely them. Kmart, Target, I'm sure Walmart's the same in the US. I'm sure, I don't know, what, what uh, Aldi, um, Asda, I don't know, all, all these places, Asda's a supermarket, Pete. Uh, all these places have these things and they're the cheapest, 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 cheapest electronics. And they're clearly designed to last you just past the manufacturer warranty. So the amount of things that I've had that have a 12 month warranty that last 13 months or have a two year warranty and last two years and like three weeks, it's crazy, isn't it? 
yeah, it, it, but a lot of it, and originally some, some of the uh, planned obsolescence, there was, there was a story about at one point, it was literally to keep people in jobs. They were like, oh, we, we, we've, we're manufacturing these goods and there was going to be a law in place that as soon as your goods reached a certain age, you had to hand them back in and get new ones. Otherwise, the people that work in the factories making the goods wouldn't be able to make it. Right. Uh, we're seeing a lot of talk with this with the whole right to repair issue. So uh, especially with Apple, there's a class action lawsuit in a lot of countries around the world. They're now saying that you, that you have to be able to repair stuff. Uh, I think there's ways around that, that Apple will, will make it hard. So you can, you can technically take this to a third party repair shop and they can repair it as opposed to Apple. If you take it to Apple, what will they usually tell you if you've got a cracked screen? Oh yeah, it's $300 and we'll give you a refurbished unit. And yes, to their credit, they do go and then recycle the bits from your old phone that, that are, are still usable. But yeah, what do you think? Is this the way of the future? Is this something that we can change? I don't know. I'll leave you with that thought uh, of the, uh, the topic of planned obsolescence. But there you go. There are, the, uh, there are this week's hidden gems. A uh, little bit of a weird uh, show this week. <laughs> but thank you for sticking with me. Uh, and thank you. Yeah, the way of the future. It probably is. I don't know. Whenever there's a culture, there's always a counterculture. So I'd, I, I, I would love to see that we would rage against the machine here and uh, suddenly we're all using old school recycled electronics. Like I'm going to find my old Nokia 3210 and put a new battery in it and bring it back to life and go back to texting where you have to hit the number four times for an S and three times for a T. Anyone with me? Remember those days? <laughs> Ah, uh, pretty fun. Uh, so yeah, so there you go. Just to, to recap on what we've been through here today, we talked about uh, we talked about uh, Glenn Fricker and the fifteen things. Uh, so if you missed that one, fifteen mistakes every home studio makes. Great video. Check it out in the description. We went through all of those. Uh, we talked about why you need to be careful dropping your links. We had a slightly failed attempt to show you about <laughs> about um, how to record uh, on your camera and why when you're using a, a stereo audio interface is it always only on one channel? We gave you a quick solution for that. Turns out LumaFusion is what you need for that one. Uh, and we went through a heap of those hidden gems, including why the recording industry is evil, how the Beatles rock band game was made, and uh, also the uh, why the R-phone started the dark age of the internet. All right, uh, that is going to do it here for this one. If you uh, got that, some value, if you had some fun, if you're just uh, feeling sad because England lost the soccer, hit the thumbs up. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, Russ, and sorry to other football fans out there. Uh, hit, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Uh, we are live four times a week. We're live on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So we do have one more show this week, which is GarageBand Weekly. So if you are a GarageBand creator, or as we say, GarageBand curious, then you can tune in for GarageBand Weekly coming up tomorrow. And uh, until then, folks, please be kind to yourself. Be kind to others. Keep creating and rock on. See ya.